Today I am going to talk to you about a thrilling action movie that will take you on a fast-paced, revenge-fueled ride. The movie starts with a tense meeting between two strangers. One of them is a Mexican man and the other is an extremely nervous undercover FBI agent named Sarah. The Mexican man is talking to Sarah about his daughter Beatriz. Sarah hands the Mexican man some money and then he goes over to Beatriz and warns her to be nice to Sarah. He then leaves. As the daughter gets up from drawing and encourages Sarah to follow her into another room, it becomes apparent that the Mexican man has offered his daughter to engage in sexual intercourse with Sarah, however Sarah has no intention of following through. Beatriz puts her hands on Sarah and encourages him to kiss her, but all he wants to do first is talk. The daughter is suspicious right away, and rips open his jacket and shirt to reveal a taped microphone on his chest. Immediately she yells out to her father on the street below that Sarah has something on him. The FBI surveillance team who has been listening jump out of their van and head up to the apartment immediately for the arrest, but Sarah and the girl's father are already in a fight. Sarah is struggling against her father near the open window and balcony and they fall over, with Sarah using her father as a shield against the floor. Her father loses his life instantly, and Sarah is wounded but not seriously. The FBI then take away the daughter. In the next scene, we are introduced to our protagonist, Alex Lewis, an assassin for hire, who is going about his usual business. His job is to infiltrate into a hospital as an orderly nurse and place himself in a hospital room, where his target is visiting his sick mother. Alex pretends to attend to things in the room and nods when the target asks him to leave him alone with his mother. Very calmly he approaches the target from behind and with great speed, wraps a wire tightly around his neck, cutting his throat and suffocating him at the same time. The target is eliminated, and he carefully lies him on the ground, as his mother looks on all the while in horror, too weak to call out for help. He disappears just as quickly as he entered the room and heads back to his car. He pulls the visor down to find his car keys, which he keeps there, but they are missing. Alex starts to panic, because he needs to get away, and he always places his key there. He absentmindedly checks his pants pockets and with a sigh of relief, finds his key. He seems very disturbed by this lapse of memory, and as we shall see, this is not the last time he will have these memory issues. Alex meets up with a new client, who seems very skeptical of him. He receives the new targets he must eliminate, and he heads to the city where he must complete this next job. When he checks into the hotel, he must ask the hotel attendant what number his hotel room is, and the room attendant reminds him it is clearly labeled on his hotel keys. Once again, Alex smiles in embarrassment and thinks how silly it is that he didn't realize this. Once he settles into his hotel room, he writes his hotel room number on his arm, as well as the important names he must remember. That night, he drives to the home of his first target, who has just said goodnight to his wife, as she is going out for the night. His wife leaves and then the man hears his doorbell buzz. The man looks irritated and heads out to answer it, but when he does, he comes face to face with Alex, who grabs him by the front of his coat and aims a gun in his face. Alex forcefully pushes him back into his house and asks for the item he needs to retrieve, which are USB sticks with very sensitive material on them. The man is completely panicked and keeps saying to Alex that he hasn't said anything. He opens the safe and then tries to stall Alex by talking, and then grabs a loose doorknob and tries to hit Alex in the face with it. Alex is too quick and overpowers the man, putting him in a headlock. His daughter can't see him, but calls out that she is going over to a friend's house overnight. She waits for his answer, but then accepts he must be out and walks away. Alex finishes the man permanently but almost forgets to take the USB sticks with him. He grabs them at the last second and sends his new client an SMS that he will be home in time for dinner, which is code for him having successfully eliminated his first target. Alex gets back in his car and then flips through the photos of his targets and comes to the only other one he is to eliminate and this one is a young girl of about 13 years of age. He stares at her photo in confusion. Meanwhile, the FBI agent Sarah and Amistead visit the scene of the assassination of Alex's first target, where they meet with special agent Gerald Nussbaum, to interview the deceased's wife. The wife explains to them it was a robbery, because the safe was opened and things were taken. Sarah finds out that she has not spoken to police yet, she only called Nussbaum first and Sarah tells her they will need local police help too. Sarah goes and gets Detective Mora, who is inside, to interview her. He does so, but she doesn't provide much information. The next scene focuses on Alex, who visits his brother who has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's. 
Alex looks pained to see his brother in such a state. He does not seem to recognize Alex or register his presence. Alex cups a coin in his hand and kisses him before leaving. At the Child Exploitation Task Force of the FBI, Detective Marcus is frustrated because he is being taken off the case. Nussbaum explains that there is nothing left to go on, now that Beatriz's father is gone. Detective Marcus and Sarah do not believe this at all and insinuate to Nussbaum that there is corruption in the U.S. Department of the Child Exploitation Task Force. Agent Marcus mentions that in Mexico, they follow through with leads on the big fish, but in the U.S., they seem to turn a blind eye. Sarah is questioned by Nussbaum on the visa which he got for Beatriz, and Sarah is confused because he thought they were in the job of protecting children, and she definitely qualifies for a new visa and witness protection, because she has seen firsthand the trafficking ring her father ran. Nesbaum dismisses Sarah and says that he was not authorized to do that and they can move Beatrice to a group home instead. Sarah and Marcus are both frustrated with the outcome of this case, but Nesbaum wants Sarah to focus instead on the Van Camp homicide, which is the target that Alex eliminated in his house. Sarah is not happy, but he listens. Sarah drives Beatrice out to the group home and tries to do his best to reassure her that she will be okay. Outside the house, Alex is watching them. That night, Alex breaks into the group home to eliminate Beatrice, but she wakes up just as he aims the gun at her. She promises that she will not speak a word and Alex just can't bring himself to hurt her, so he quickly runs back out the door and leaves. Alex confronts his client violently, sending him a very clear message, call off the contract for Beatrice or he keeps the USB sticks. He never does child targets. Next we are introduced to the head of the child trafficking operation, Devana Sealman. A very composed, older Spanish woman. Alex's client rings her in a panic, telling her that Alex is holding the USB sticks ransom and that he has refused to do a contract on a child. Even though Sealman is not impressed with the situation, she says to him that she understands his point of view. She reassures the man that she will handle it. Alex is back at his hotel having a few drinks to console himself, and defends a prostitute who is being harassed by a drunk man at the bar. She stays with him overnight and in the morning, he sees on the news that Beatriz was murdered. Because of his memory issues, he questions the prostitute and asks if he was there all night, and she assures him he never went anywhere. With that understanding, he warns her to stay out of sight and get out of town for a few days. He then leaves. As he enters the outside car park and moves towards his car, he looks underneath and sees that someone has planted a car bomb on his vehicle. A man hiding behind some cars starts shooting at the prostitute as she runs out of the hotel door to let Alex know he left his medication behind. Alex shoots back and runs to her aid, but it is too late. Filled with rage at the innocent bloodshed, he hunts the man down and finds the shooter. It is someone he knows. He ties him to the steering wheel. He then places the woman in the boot and starts the car up, the man pleads but Alex does not listen and he walks away as the car explodes and bursts into flames. Alex has one aim and that is to eliminate his client, because he knows he is responsible for Beatriz being done away with. The man is jogging on a treadmill in the gym. It is raining outside, so he cannot see very clearly, but his attention is alerted to a man in a hoodie that is walking up to the glass-windowed wall of the gym. Without hesitation, he raises his gun with a silencer on the tip and shoots the man through the glass. The man tumbles to the floor off his treadmill and remains motionless. Alex decides to hide out at an old, closed bakery where he grew up, so he can figure out his next move. He gets out his laptop and decides to view what's on the USB drives, to figure out what is worth ending targets over. What he sees fills him with disgust and pure rage. He sees his ex-client, that he just eliminated, with Beatrice's dad, handling her as her pimp. Then he sees another man, who is the son of Devana Sealman, force Beatrice to have intercourse with him. He knows exactly what is involved now and it is all surrounding child trafficking, and he realizes that Beatrice was a key witness. Alex decides to take matters into his own hands. The next day, Devana's son Randy approaches her for help, filled with anxiety, because he is worried about Alex having the USB sticks and knowing what's on them, and now, there has been an execution of one of Devana's men. She reassures him that she will get him out of harm's way and send him for a vacation, but that he needs to get help, because he is sick. Alex finds out how to contact FBI agent Sarah and confronts him about their inactivity on the child trafficking and bringing the people that have abused children to judgment. Sarah questions Alex as to whether he did the execution at the gym last night and Alex confirms it. 
Sarah asks him if he was responsible for Beatriz being eliminated, but this time he vehemently denies it. He implores Sarah to act if he can't finish this, because he has been too slow to bring them to justice. FBI agent Ami Stead manages to track the call and realizes Alex is calling from the park just outside, but by the time they run there, Alex is already gone. It's then that Sarah realizes that Alex is going to take out all the traffickers that they haven't been able to. Alex tracks down Devanna's son on a boat party and quietly slips into the cabin rooms. While a young woman is getting changed in the bathroom, he warns her to be quiet and shut the door after he leaves. He promptly walks up to Randy, who is lying on the bed with his eyes closed awaiting a massage, places a pillow over his head, and shoots him in the head. Sarah follows Alex closely and runs after him into the cabin, but it is too late. He runs off the boat after seeing Randy lying there and manages to catch up with Alex. Alex aims a gun at Sarah and tells him that he has done lots of bad things, but he will never hurt children. Detective Marcus walks up next to Sarah to protect him, but Sarah warns Marcus to put the gun down and let Alex go. Alex gets into a car, but Marcus continues to shoot as he drives away and one bullet gets him, wounding him badly in his stomach. Alex heads back to the bakery and starts to treat his own wound by cauterizing it and applying alcohol to it to stop the bleeding. Once recovered enough, Alex goes straight to the hotel where Sealman is staying, with all her police security. Alex walks to the bottom floor and tells security to drop their weapons, making his way up the floors to Sealman, eliminating any threat on the way with his sharp marksman skills. He almost gets Sealman, but his gun has no ammunition left. Detective Mora then rushes up behind Alex and knocks him unconscious. Detective Mora interrogates him viciously, but Alex will not speak to anyone except Vincent Sarah. Sarah is called to the hotel, because Alex won't speak without him there. The FBI, after finding where Alex has been hiding out, discover the USB sticks there and look at what's on them. Sarah shows Special Agent Nussbaum and asks him to transfer custody of Alex from El Paso Police Department to the FBI. Nussbaum is reluctant at first, but then agrees. When El Paso police have Alex transported to emergency, Sarah visits him, ready to have him in his custody, and is angered by how beaten up he is. He questions Alex, and Alex lets them know he is terminally ill, he has nothing to lose, and he wants Sealman eliminated for good, for contracting him to eliminate Beatriz, a mere child. Sarah tells Alex that she is not linked officially to any crime. Meanwhile, Sealman talks her doctor into using a lethal injection to eliminate Alex for good. Back at the hospital, Alex tells Sarah he will testify against Sealman, he wants justice, but Sarah tells him he is not a trustworthy witness, because he is a contract assassin and his testimony won't stand up in court. Then Alex reveals that he has a damning piece of evidence against Sealman, a recorded phone call of Sealman threatening the first target he eliminated, Ellis Van Camp. He has the phone call on a flash drive. The problem is he can't remember where he hit it. Sarah is extremely frustrated and tells him he needs to remember, as it could be enough in court. Sarah tells his superior Nussbaum about the evidence and Nussbaum says if he can get it, he will take it to court. Sarah then goes back to Alex and asks if he remembers, but he doesn't. That night, Sealman's doctor sneaks into Alex's room and prepares the syringe to inject into Alex's drip. But just before he does, Alex speaks, so he leans forward, and when he does Alex grabs the doctor by the throat. He manages to get himself free from the bed and holds the doctor hostage. He demands to speak to Sarah. Dozens of police stand guard outside the hospital, ready at any moment to release fire, but they are told to wait as Alex comes outside the front of the hospital. He meets Sarah and then hops into a nearby police car with him. Alex tells Sarah that he needs to bring them to justice and then says something odd to him the word, Barry. He spells out the letters B-E-R-Y, and then faces his fate, walking out of the car to be instantly shot down by all the police. A few days later, Sarah is pulling down all his files from the case, feeling defeated, until he pulls down a photo of Alex's hideout, the old bakery. He notices the old neon sign is missing the K, so the letters spell Barry, the last word he spoke to him. He knows instantly that's where Alex hit his flash drive. Sure enough, when Sarah and Amistad investigate the sign, they find the flash drive inside one of the letters. They are excited and take their findings to their superior Nussbaum, but he fobs them off, saying it is worthless now that Alex is deceased. Sarah becomes angry and realizes the corruption is within the FBI. That night, Sealman is sitting on her balcony with a glass of wine, 
and someone comes behind her and slits her throat, causing her to arch her head back and lose her life. Someone took justice into their own hands. Sarah, Amistad and other FBI agents are drinking at a bar when they see on the news that Seal Man has been murdered, with no witnesses or evidence. The last scene we are shown is Detective Marcus burning some clothes, hinting that he is the one who took justice into his own hands after being frustrated for so long that the authorities took no action or may have even been complicit in Sealman's organization.